okay so today we will deploy the MapReduce job which we have done last class the word count problem on to our Hadoop cluster okay and uh, the last class also I have uh, we have faced some issues with respect to the creation of the Java project I gave you right Maven archetype and also the version of the um, uh, HDP version which you have to use in your project when you are building a Java project what version of HDP you are using how to you how to take up the HDP version uh, we will see that today and also I'm gonna also we'll see whatever we have not able to do that's the Maven archetype command so that works actually takes a it takes a little bit of time it takes few minutes of time so the after the class I tried running it so it ran successfully without any changes so it just took a little bit of time okay so let me start my cluster so once I start my machines and then we will start our cluster so meanwhile uh, let me also tell you that uh, command So this is the command which we are trying to run, in, run other day. Let us this is my workspace and I would like to run that command now to create the maven project java maven project uh, whatever we have done manually the last class so this is actually you can do it uh, through the command line it will do it in one shot so everything will be created as if the way we have created the source main java the packages and everything so pro that's your pro so project packaging is what exactly you want to get one minute Okay, so so this is so pro project. Okay, I'm very sorry. Let me. So as I've explained you, uh, in this command, the pro the project packaging which you are seeing here, and the project name. So. If you see D artifact ID is your project name and the group ID is the project packaging that's a package in your Java so we will give it as a com dot training com dot training and project name let us give some project name which we have we are already given word count and everything so I will give map reduce word count map reduce word count that's your project name just enter it it will take some time and uh, but it will uh, create that project for us this mavenize project it will create for us what was the use of the grip command uh, what is it what was the use for the grip command grip grip command yes, grep yeah it tries to get the grep the english meaning says that you are trying to catch something so the grep command will also try to hold try to catch something so you want to do a ep uh, huh? grep that's what i'm saying grep right this particular command we are trying to say grep right the grep command what does it mean the grep uh so it means for example you have any file uh library cat learning let me just take up any file auth.r okay vi auth.r i wanted to in this i don't know how many files are there uh, options for example some some line i have to uh, uh try to find it out so i say cat options there are a lot of options okay there are a lot of lot of useful auth.r and grep i wanted to search for this string options 
So when I say cat auth, that means I'm basically okay. uh, uh, concatenating the auth.r and I'm pipe operating. That means the output of this goes to this grep. And in this grep, I am looking out, I am catching this options. So in that file, there are, these, these are three lines which actually has this options line. The grep, can, grep command not only do the, not only you can do with this, but you can actually see, I wanted to say recursively grep minus r, uh, I wanted to look out for options in all the files under dot directory. So mm -hmm. what it is doing under this current directory, it is going to search all the files where I am going to find where I am going where I am going to have this match of options. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good. Now here, if you see on the top. Uh, so here I ha it took some time, but uh, have you seen? So you have observed that it has created the project. So let me do an ls, and that's the MapReduce word count project. Now what I'll do, I will I, I, if I go inside my project which I've just created, it will automatically create everything for me. You have seen that pom.xml. I can open this pom.xml and please see that it has automatically created this everything for us. It has a project model version. The group ID, please see com dot training, pro artifact ID, map is word count, packaging jar, version, everything it has created for us, right? And then if I want to import this project onto my Eclipse, so once you create this project, you have to import this project. But before importing the project, the Maven project, the Eclipse has to know uh, that this is a Maven project. The Eclipse has to have the settings. So, but right now you don't have any settings. LS minus A, if I do, there are no Eclipse settings. So when you you cannot uh, you cannot import this project into your Eclipse now. Now what you can do, you say Maven Eclipse colon Eclipse, and it will actually create uh, the settings files for your um, for your project. So if I do an ls minus a now, you can see dot Eclipse dot class dot project and everything. You can see these files. Previously it was not there. Now when you run the command Maven Eclipse colon Eclipse, so it has created this project or Eclipse related files for you. Now you are ready to import this project into your Eclipse. So if you open up your Eclipse and how do you import it? So you click on the file and import command is there, import button is there, click on import button. Um, you click on this existing projects into workspace, go to your root directory and uh, this is your uh, this is your workspace it, it has directly taken me to my workspace this is the project which i wanted which i've just created i want to import this i select that and i say open and if you just to verify that it has properly imported so you will see this or else in this here you will see that it has not able to import it but since it has been able to import so you see this it has been uh, it, that you know, radio box has been checked it checked now you say finish and you will see that uh, the map it is what count has actually created for you the project already imported if you click on this you see that this has automatically created for you source main java com dot training source test java com dot training so source test is your uh, all the test cases will go right all the test cases here you have actual class files which will run and everything has got created automatically um, using that command you open this form.xml and And this is what it is. So what I can do is take up my dependencies and I can actually put this depend. I can cut copy paste. Now what I'm doing, I have yesterday's, I have taken and I'm cut copy uh, and I'm pasting this contents into my new form. The same thing I have cut and now the one thing what you have to understand that how do we take the HTTP version the first and the foremost you need to know which HTTP version you are working on okay and for that uh, the in the last class I have told you what HTTP version but let's see that today that how to take the HTTP version so here you this is my this is the machine where I have this somebody running So 
So click on the admin, go to stacks and versions and first and foremost check the versions. So the version which you are using is this. Okay, let me take up the text pad. So the HDP version you are using is 2.4.2.0.2.0 hyphen 258. This is hyphen 258, right? Two dot on the below you can see 2.4.2.2.4.2.0 hyphen 258. Now and now if you come back here, you will see the versions of HDFS version. What's the HDFS version you are using? 2.7 dot two dot two dot four okay what's the mr version you are seeing you see here two dot seven dot two dot four okay a also two dot four page you see that zero dot seven dot zero two dot four hive one dot two dot one dot two dot four in all this till falcon or whatever below whatever the hadoop components are there except the Kerberos, remove the Kerberos, it's not comes with the Ambari, but whatever it is there, can you see the last two bits, the last two digits are 2.4? Have you observed this? That last two digit 2.4, this 2.4 is nothing but this 2.4 from your HDFS version, from your HDP version. Okay, now what is that HDP version I'm using? The HDP version I'm using is, the HDP version of your Maven dependency is, is 2.7.2.4 or I will say 2.7.1 and 2.7.2.4 258 this is the HTTP version which you have to provide here and that's how you have to determine that which HTTP version you are using I hope this is clear so that's what I have done in my word count uh, project the last in the last class in the last class what we have written here and I have not changed anything else that's the palm that's this is the only thing you have to change okay I'm done so what I'm gonna do now uh, so yeah uh, actually I have a question if you can uh, actually uh, can you go back on this the virgin uh, page uh, yeah, yeah. I have one doubt here. See, we are saying yarn is a replacement of uh, map uh, reduce. So, how come we are seeing both the things map reduce to and yarn? Yarn is not only meant for the map reduce. Yarn, you can run OpenMP application, MPI application, C C plus plus applications, legacy applications. Any kind of applications can be run as run can be run in yarn. Yarn is not a replacement of a map reduce. In yarn, yarn is much more bigger framework than the MapReduce. MapReduce is just a one corner in the yarn framework. Yarn is a very much bigger framework which not only supports the MapReduce to run, but it does support a lot of other applications, legacy applications which are not written in a MapReduce paradigm. They are also allowed to run and scale. So yarn has came into picture because in the industry standard, if you if you think now Hadoop is becoming a de facto standard for your dis distributed computing system, and I say de facto, it is becoming default. So by default, Hadoop is used in each and every organization. Now Hadoop has came into picture only just five years back or seven years back have started using. Now do you think so the companies, and we have seen how does the MapReduce MapReduce has to be worked, right? MapReduce programming, we have seen how it has to be developed. It has to have mapper class, it has to have reducer class, it has to have a driver class, and the map, mapper class receives one refer time. In the reducer method, you have a grouping operations and all those stuff. Now all those legacy applications which have built in in the last 30, 40 uh, or last 50 years, do you think each and every legacy application will be converted into a MapReduce paradigm? It will be a hell lot of problem, right? The other thing would be that how can a framework, how um, is uh, so the questions which uh, the company will ask that boss, I cannot write uh, my legacy code uh, which is written in C, C++ which have been running in client's location from almost 30, 40 years. I cannot write that, I cannot take all the code and write into MapReduce paradigm. 
can you have do you have any framework that uh, that automatically scales up all my legacy applications and that's where the yarn framework was built on top of hadoop where MapReduce is one aspect of a yarn but it does supports all the legacy applications to be run parallelly and scale it that was the reason and that's why you see both of them because one is yarn where you can write yarn applications also and another is a map reduce which is a default a programming model which comes with uh, the hadoop is that clear okay yes uh, thanks Om. so um, i have one question uh, here so when we write a plain map reduce uh, program does that run on map reduce 2 or that runs on the yarn that will run on the yarn by default yarn uh, i hope you have to go back to my third lecture wherein when i was talking about um, the i don't know whether i have uh, spoken i don't remember but uh, did i told you there are three ways of running the map reduce jobs one yarn that means it will run on the yarn it can classic and the local a job can run in three modes yarn classic and local there are three options i'm not sure whether i've told you it or not yarn and i don't know the property but a job can be run in three mode yarn classic local uh, when a map is job you have to specify this configuration that where you want to run it whether you want to run it on yarn whether you want to run it classic or local by default it is the yarn the default is when you submit a map to job it will run on yarn that in the yarn okay uh, but you have the flexibility to say classic which will run on a classic way and that is your earlier map reduce framework uh, local it will run in a local jvm there are three ways to run this map. I, I i don't remember the property but when it comes i will for sure tell you uh, so I'm sorry, you know, I have one more question when we say actually I was under the impression that map reduced to here means uh, the API So actually I'm a bit confused about the runtime and the API. So is uh, if you can explain a bit on that Yarn is a framework which has the concept of containers map reduce to is the API API don't forget about don't worry about the map that APIs and the older API newer API and all when I have explicitly mentioned about that You don't have to worry about this map reduce 2 and the yarn the map reduce 2 you generally does not mean that uh, The API or the API and all uh, that's 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 different you don't even in the map even without yarn also you have the newer API the newer API came before long before the yarn was developed So don't worry about that. That's not related to API this map is 2 and the yarn because map is 2 it just means that mr version 2 there are two versions of mr mr version 1 which is mr v1 that's your classic mr v2 is nothing but it is going to run on yarn that's it, it mr v1 can run only on map framework mr v2 can run on yarn as well as classic can run on yarn uh, classic local MR V1 can run only on MR framework and local. <coughs> so there is no much difference. There is very big difference, I am saying, but don't get confused with the yarn is a framework. If you see both of them have given your map produce, um, what do you say? Uh, yarn is also the description remains the same. Don't get confused. Your map produce 2 it just means that there is a map produce version which is there which will run which is a next generation map reduce or it's a version 2 yarn is a very much bigger framework than map reduce so should not say um, mrv2 is yarn please don't be under that impression yarn it says that yet another resource negotiator similar kind of a frameworks are mesos yarn is there one schedule one kind of a uh, what do you say schedulers or which has scheduler as well as execution you have another thing is a mesos this is also like a yarn my map produce job if i want i can run on mesos i hope if you if you are working on spark spark can be run on mesos also okay let me uh, thanks so much for your explanation now let's uh, let me start this so it will take some little bit time okay so now yesterday we have developed the vatcon project and uh, please just a little bit of a thing that you have to create the project move on to eclipse and then you create your so i uh, create your classes what okay i have written the driver code right i'm not sure because um 
uh, I have to figure it out. These okay, these two things we have to see from our Yan. Sorry, from our Ambari, we are gonna see what is the address of our name node, address of our resource manager. Okay, we are actually doing the basic. Uh, then in the next class, in the next class when I am going to use the tool learner, I will not use these two things. I'll be I'll be getting I'll be getting from the machine itself. Okay. So this is one way of providing it explicitly but in the next class i will tell you that how to avoid this thing because you cannot remember these things right and you don't know what is it every time you have to use the ambari to find out what is this so the best way is to get from the machine itself so we'll see that in the next class and this i will right now see and also um, what is it okay and also we have to see that you know, since our cluster is kerberized we have installed kerberos so that would be a little bit challenging uh, let me see whether it really uh, uh, it can actually i have never ran on my car i have ran, never ran job on my carbrise cluster so spark jobs are fine but i'm not sure map it is jobs uh, i just need to get the ticket let me see so that's fine we'll see figure it out uh, the guys who are new and who have not yet come to carbrose that's fine if you have ambari installation and dhdp inst installation okay uh, so that that would be fine yeah um i wanted to find out my hdf address of my name node and since it is an ha enabled so again uh, the guys who have not done ha it will be a little different if you're not done ha that's also fine but you have to uh, the way i'm doing it here uh, fs dot default so this is the address of the name node in my case hdfs colon my cluster ns that's my cluster namespace in if it is not ha then it would be hdfs colon slash slash your address of your your machine host name colon 54310 i hope uh, the guys who have done the ha part along with me they are aware that hdfs colon slash slash you will have a host name colon 54310 after after ha it will change to your namespace so that's what the namespace it will yeah okay let us see that um, so that's my uh, address of name node and this is the yarn resource manager address I have to go to yarn I have to go to configs okay and I will filter yarn resource manager address so this is my interestingly this is my address okay yarn dot resource manager but i'm not but why, uh, since we have not done yarn uh, ha yes yarn ha is also there let it come up let it come up first Okay, that's the address I'll take it up and just try it here so for submitting the map it is job you need the resource manager address right because he's a single point of our contacts and also since our data is going to be on the HDFS and of the HDFS master the master or the HDFS um, name node address must be known because that guy is the single point of a contact now once it is done I am gonna uh, build this code since I've changed the code I'm I have to build it once the project name is what count okay CD what count ls maven clean install okay the build is successful and CD target ls that's the I'll take the shaded jar to my cluster scp minus i and actually what i'm trying to do now is from my local machine from my local machine i am i'm copying uh this jar to 
the cluster, one of the cluster machine, EC2 hyphen user at let me uh, take to this machine itself. Oh, EC2 user. So now I have changed. So this is so I have sh shifted. I mean, so I have moved my jar to my cluster. Let me uh, SSH minus I. Let me log into my machine now. Hadoop training dot pim. EC2 user at Okay, ls so that's the jar which I have it here and also let me check whether I have my uh, Shakespeare data or not and guys since my cluster is Kerberos I have to get the ticket first and let me see whether I have to take the ticket the Kerberos uh, yes of course I have the Kerberos ticket great um, what I'm gonna do but if you don't have the Kerberos ticket you know how to get it but you don't have to worry if your cluster is not Kerberos I do press minus ls do I have the Shakespeare? So I'm gonna run my data onto my Shakespeare. No, no valid credentials it says. Can it? I'm getting the ticket. So is this because uh, we have to uh, use the other user, HDFS user? Because right now I believe it is uh, EC2 dash user. But EC2 user can also, I have created that I have no I can get the ticket for EC2 user also. The only problem I have not en enabled my HDFS also here the web HDFS it might get a problem for a web HDFS utilities browse the file system. Yep, so unauthorized right? This is because the web HDFS has to be enabled. So since our cluster is curvized, so these all these things will fail. I have to enable the web HDFS. Okay. Uh, what I want to do here is uh, since this guy, as why well, we can run it from this guy also. EC2 user, he he should have a ticket. But what is this? 17.5 and 17.16. See this 16th May, and this is 17th May, and today is 25th May. Now it has got the appropriate ticket. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I wanted to run my MapReduce job on the Shakespeare folder. Everyone can see that, right? Shakespeare folder here. I want to run my MapReduce job on my Shakespeare folder. Since I have not enabled the HDFS, web HDFS, so I would work like this Hadoop FS minus LS and if you have gone through the basics of my video, basics of the MapReduce video, one has to tell me, oh, I cannot, uh, what is CM1? What is the Shakespeare slash CM1? This is what I believe it is the uh, snapshot. No, 
Yeah, snapshot. We have to do it the other day, right? Okay. Yeah, you took Not a problem. I will, I will put my Shakespeare folder again. Hadoop FS minus put Shakespeare as my shakes uh, as my day map reduce input data. And I'll say IP data. IP stands for input underscore data. That's my input data. That's simple. And the default block size is 120 MB, I believe. Okay, now Hadoop FS minus LS IP underscore data. Please tell me that how much, how many map tasks is going to run, how many map reduce tasks it is gonna run. Assuming the block size is 120 MB, I cannot show you right now. It's a block size one, assume it's a block size 120 MB. Of course, it is a 120 MB. Don't assume here because I know that because we know that the block size here, if you go to Ambari, you can actually check. What's your block size? Go to your configs. Search for BFS dot block size. This is one twenty eight MB. Okay. Uh, okay. Can you hear me, guys? Now. Yes, so yes. Yeah. Now you can see that it has power went off, so it got disconnected. Ah. So can you tell me how many how many map tasks is gonna run? Five. Five, right? Yes, it will run. I'm not wrong, right? No, no. Perfect. Now, how to run your MapReduce job? How to run, how to deploy your jar? Okay, how to submit your MapReduce job? So you say Hadoop jar, your jar name. This is your jar name. Then it has to be followed by fully qualified driver class name. So in your job, this is your project and we have specified the fully qualified this is our driver class okay the driver class is the one which has the main method so the fully qualified name the fully qualified name is nothing but it's your package and the class name for example this is a package so it will be com dot training dot what com dot what com driver that's your fully qualified driver class name the other way so if you can if, if you see that i have i'm just hovering my mouse over the class and it has displayed me the actual it is displaying me what is my actual uh, fully qualified driver class name. What I do, I select my class, right click on it and say copy qualified name. Come back onto my terminal and paste it. Okay. And then you give your input data, IP underscore data and my output and MR underscore output. So now input underscore data is the same input underscore data, but I have not given the fully qualified path but i hope everyone understands that this data will be searched under the home directory of the ec2 user because who is performing the operation is the ec2 user right so the home directory of the ec2 user on hdfs on hdfs it is slash user slash ec2 user on local file system it is slash home slash ec2 user but on hdfs it is slash user slash ec2 user and that's it will be it will be actually this data will be searched under that particular folder and also this is your output directory mr underscore op it since you have not given any path that where to create this directory so by default it will be created under the home directory of the user on the hdfs so this right now our user is ec2 user so this directory will be created under user slash user slash ec2 user right and just submit it and let's see And that was known that, okay, unknown Q. Anyone would like to solve this issue? Why so we have to mention the Q to which we want to submit it. 
Yani so we have created that engineering all three four uh, queues the other day. As a part of our uh, previous admin training, we have created some queues like engineering development QA, marketing advertisement slays, right? So I would like to, and then, okay, who can submit the job also? I hope I have our cluster, which we have created is a full blown, I mean, to so say it's a standard cluster, which the industry will be looking out for because you cannot just do anything. So you have to specify each and everything. And uh, okay, so engineering dot development, I would like to, I would like to uh, submit my map this job on engineering queue under that development. So I forgot the uh, command here. So minus D, I'm mean, just a property name, mapred, mapreduce dot Q dot name equal to engineering dot dot QA. There may be a typo, NME you have written there. Typo is there, NME. Reason? Okay. Uh, it's NAME, right? Yeah. Where you are specifying the Q name. It says that my input part does not exist. Uh, so it is including minus D also, yeah. Yeah. if you see. We wanted to give the command line parameters, okay, and it will not work. The reason is the minus D, okay, I have to, I cannot do like this because the minus D option which I have, which I have, which you are trying to do it right. The minus D options will work only when the driver code which you have written it has a tool runner. It will not work if you have written the driver code like this. So my next section, if I would have, if I would have written my driver code like this, extends configured. Ext you will see that right now I know what we'll do. Extends configured and implements tool. Implements tool. Ah, I'm very sorry. Implements tool. So when I would have, if I would have written my driver code like this, then the minus D option would have worked. Right now, the minus D option will not work since I have done my code like this. For that, if I have to work, then I have to say conf.set. The properties name is uh, mapreduce dot Q dot Q dot name would be root dot let me give the fully qualified root dot name dot QA. Let me also search whether this is a correct name or not. May I produce dot job dot Q name. Thank you. Then we have Actually, we are saved here. MapReduce dot job dot job dot Q name. This is the actual property. Okay, and we this is our Q. Uh, the guys who have not done the HA have not done the capacity scheduler, no need to worry. You don't have to give any of these things. Okay, you don't have to set this. It will by default be uh, submitted onto your default queue. Since we have capacity scheduler also being also here, so that's why we are doing this. Okay, since I've changed the code, I have to build it first. Uh, 
so yeah so is this because of the tool uh, runner uh, like you know in my last uh, session i asked you one question that you know when we run the example uh, programs there we uh, there we don't uh, specify the uh, driver class is it because of this tool runner that's a spark job you are saying right or map reduce job uh, no i'm talking about uh, the map uh, reduce job like in the map reduce job in the example we have the uh, uh, word count no, but uh, there we never mention any uh, driver class no, no, no. that's the project if you have seen if you see the code so you actually give the word count as it's a switch it's a switch inside that it will actually when you give a switch so and when you run the job using that switch it will point it to uh, uh, appropriate driver code you will see that program you will understand that so but you have to provide driver without driver code cannot be done okay and i am okay. i am moving sure. my code to my cluster okay done and i am back to my cluster and let us see that whether this time it's what it works or not i have to remove this unknown queue engineering dot q what queue we have we have correct no okay let where is it my ambari engineering dot q a and what is it saying engineering dot q a i hope i have given the partitions also guys so let's very let's see that with the partition is so engineering you have engineering dot development engineering dot q okay it's not root dot engineering dot development should be engineering dot development or engineering dot qa okay engineering dot qa and again i have to build it and Maven here install. I will delete it from here, and I'll go inside my target folder again. Move it to my cluster. Okay, I'm back to my cluster. It has moved, and let us run this. says that in ring dot q at this time do we don't we have unknown q why it is unknown engineering dot q a the spelling is fine right engineering dot q a what is it it should be proper engineering no um actually uh, the address of hdfs might be incorrect in configuration no it's where no it says that where no it says that a uh, to unknown queue it's the queue is unknown so is ec2 users uh, authorized because the other day uh, when i asked the same question how does the queue know what all user can be have we uh, like all the users right now all the users are 
can do this until unless I have explicitly effective users anyone can you see this here submit anyone okay custom did I do okay submit applications anyone administrator queue okay let me engineering development okay QA right QA can submit and see this QA EC2 users can submit no let me say anyone yes and let me save and refresh queues fine right now I have saved and refreshed now let me see whether I'm able to run it let's see It's fine that engineering dot QA. Engineering dot QA. To do this, let me use one more way to figure it out that what is going wrong. User HDP find dot minus name uh, examples dot jar. Hadoop jar Hadoop jar Is it uh, a minus jar? I forgot to put the dot. So it is trying to figure out the slash. It is wrong. I want to use the word count. Word count. And here I can use minus D. Uh, what was that name? We can figure it out from here. Minus D map uh, map reserve Q dot name equal to engineering dot QA IP underscore data output. So is space required there? I don't think. Usually, uh, I uh, yeah, maybe. Where space? Uh, where you are mentioning uh, minus d. Usually, there is uh, no space. How come it's taking this engine dot qa then? It's required. It's it, it will it, it's fine. If yeah. You don't okay. Give it. It okay. will fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let maybe me mistake. Let me see that. Yeah. Engineering dot qa is an un it says that engine.q is an unknown queue. So let us give engine.development or marketing.sales or whatever it is. Let's say marketing, uh, where is it? Uh, engineering.development, I can see that here. Uh, engineering.qa.
interestingly if you see that I have removed the engineering and I have given just QA okay could be let me just refresh this page and see that whether my job is running or not I think it's running you can always click on the applications and you can see that it is running on the my job is running here 20% right it has so the mistake which we have done is not the entire thing which we have to give is just the child queue so if I remove this It will work. Let me Maven clean. Maven clean install. Since I have to give the code that this guy, so I, uh, I have to change the code, so that's why I'm building it and passing it again. Moving to moving the jar to my cluster. working yeah it has passed uh, rm minus f what count oh i'm very sorry i have to i have deleted now i don't know whether it gets copied or not. sometimes it does not get copied so that's why i have to first delete and then it's there right now I don't know why reverse search is not working now. So Hadoop jar jar name. This is your jar name space fully qualified driver class name. For that you can copy your class, select your class, right click, copy qualified name, go back, paste it here. And then input path is IP underscore data, and the output path is let's say uh, MR underscore output. That's my output directory. And this time it should pass it has started uh, working on it so let us see the UI and uh, this is the jar name you can see that the name of the jar that this is actually the job name the name of the job is not set so by default it is taking the jar name in the when I am going to run the next time I will give an appropriate uh, a job name and you can see that here okay uh, allocated memory percentage of Q percent of cluster everything that's fine Applic oh. application master cannot be reached because I have to give the IP address but nevertheless let us see it here so you can see that here now once uh, I will set my IP address then I will show you uh, the application master as well now right now you are seeing that the map of this job is progressing 0% 20 40 60 100 and then reduce there is as such no error okay so uh, we'll talk about the counters and everything later but right now what your job is that it has there is as such no error and the map of the job has completed successfully if it has success it has, if it has success if it has successfully completed I want to see my output if you remember the output directory which you have given is the MR underscore output I want to see the directory okay I will say Hadoop FS minus LS and MR underscore output would be here okay let me go inside my mr underscore output Hadoop fs minus ls mr underscore output and how many resources it was running i want to see how many output files and remember that by default how many output files it runs sorry by default how many resources it will run one reducer and hence it will have one oh. output file and that's where you see part hyphen r the r stands for that output is coming from the reducer i want to see my output Hadoop fs minus get to my dot to my oh Hadoop fs minus get where is my and I will open up my file to my so it's my local okay and that's what you wanted a word and how many times it has appeared Is this clear? 
so that's how you do it okay fine so that's how you see your output and that's the first cut wherein you have seen how to get a job how to get a jar you have to uh, move this jar to your cluster and how to run it uh, you don't have to worry about uh, the configurations I want you to uh, be careful if you uh, so these configurations if you see here generally you will not see but until unless you have done an HA we have done HA this is also not required until unless you have assigned some queues and all and also the third thing you don't have to worry about carburizing if your cluster is not carburized uh, so you don't have to worry about getting the tickets and all but if you find any difficulty just let me know okay now what I want to do now is the next exercise is I have seen the jar name coming as my job name and also I want to set my number of reducer class right now it is one I want to set it as two or let me set it as four okay I want to first for example I want to set the job name of my job setting appropriate name appropriate name of my job so you say job dot set job name and what count I say what count job also as I've told you I want to set the number of reducer you set the number of reducer so the method is set num reduce task and I want to set it as 4 since I have changed the code I have to build it and redeploy again Delete it here from here. Okay. Hmm. Let me say, I don't know. First, let me delete it. I will not take chance. And then I'll do it this. Uh, so, mm -hmm. uh, just a question. See, once we run our map uh, reduce and we get uh, the result in the output wood directory. But the you know the data which is present in the output directory of a particular job. See, based on that, how can we do the analytics? Do are there any other tools which takes the data from that output directory? Because based on that data, how anyone can do the analytics? Of course, of course, of course you have to do some other thing. I have actually one. We have done analytics, right? Um, you might, but see, analytics is one. There, are, there are two phases of analytics. One phase is the data, another phase is the visualization. What you are talking about is the visualization. Though you have done one kind of analytics which is a word count, but you don't infer anything until unless I show you this. If I show you this, then you will say... Yeah, exactly. That's my doubt. Because see, it is just about text data. How will I make any decision out of that? If I give you this, if you see all these things, right? these are known as word cloud. What is the meaning of this word cloud? The word cloud, you see the words with few words with the big fonts, the few words with the smaller fonts. And to tell you, this is nothing but the output of a word count problem. The greater the word count, the greater the font. The smaller the word count, the smaller the font. Where it is being used? It is being used in the websites, where in the website they will put this word cloud. And by seeing the word cloud, you can easily tell that what this website is talking about without going into the entire website. If they just um, publish this word cloud in, onto their main page of the website, you will know exactly that what this website is all about. You don't have to see the, uh, you, don't, you don't have to go with the entire contents of the, web, the website. So if this is there on a particular website, I can very well tell that it is talking about social media. If this website is there, if this word cloud is there, then it is talking about big data. You're getting my point? So this is a visualization technique which you are asking me. It is not the uh, one which you are, uh, it's not, it, this is not related to this. This is a visualization. This is a second phase of the analytics. This is the another phase of the analytics, okay? What you have done so, is the one phase. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks Om, for your explanation. I have one more question. Uh, so any tools do we need to know? Yes, of course. You have to know a lot of tools other than this. 
there are a lot of things that you can do. Tableau is there. You have okay. Node.js is there. You have a lot of JavaScript files which can take it up like your word cloud and uh, word count input and can create the data in one shot. Then create the data in uh, maybe in one minute. Node.js or Python. So you take one of the code and do it or you can write your simple problem to do it okay so you can do that so just to need to get the data and a lot of other tools which takes the data and creates the uh, word cloud so some as part of you know like the uh, end-to-end responsibility are we supposed to know that with visualization tools also no not really required that is a that is the that is the job of a data scientist how to visualize the data visualizing the data what cloud is one aspect to it right if you have seen i have shown you the output what output a layman will understand if i show him boss this is the what come what he will understand with this so the data visualization depends on the problem statement to problem statement you cannot say actually you, you cannot say that this if i take up this data and uh, uh, i'll put into my website and uh, people will infer from this that Aaron is a word which has appeared more number of times. No, you cannot say that. So it's a, it's a, it's a different, uh, what you say, uh, problem statement altogether that which visualization technique is suitable for a data. And that's the job of your data scientist. Yes, as an end-to-end, -end, if you are really interested, uh, so you can actually go. You can actually do it. Okay, some uh, thanks so much, you know, for taking time on explaining it. Thanks so much. Now let me run the job again. Okay. I don't know why it's not working. Okay, Hadoop jar, what count dot jar, uh, fully qualified driver class name. And see that I am going to give the same output directory like I have given for the previous one. I have created already the output directory is there. I am going to give the same output directory. Now what will happen? It will crib that the output directory already exists. You see this here? I am giving the same output directory and uh, which was a part of my earlier job. And then I have given the same job. Um, I have given the same directory in my current job. Now it has thrown me exception. Uh, ideally, if you guys might want to argue that it should override it. That existing directory should override it automatically. But the philosophy is this. Uh, MapReduce jobs actually runs for days. And then it generates an output, small output file of let's say few MB. And if someone by mistake has given that particular directory or that particular output directory, then the two days or the few days of job have will go waste. That is the reason Hadoop, what it does, it actually makes sure it throws an exception and make and make sure that uh, the user who is running the job, it's his responsibility to figure it out that whether he really want to delete the output directory or not. Okay, so now that's the philosophy. So having said that, I what I want to do is to give a different directory name. So I am going to give MR output one, and this time the number of map the number of due stars is four, and I want to see how many output files is gonna generate as per the uh, theoretical uh, as per theory, since num uh, output number of output files will be equal to number of reducers. So we must see there are four output files. Uh, so what is the meaning of this uh, running in uber mode? All the map task is going to run a single j. No, it's not running in uber mode. 
running uber mode is false i'll explain this concept later uh, to just to give you an idea running uber mode so the uber mode means uh, everybody understands that creating the jvm and tearing down the jvm is a very costly affair now i have so in my map it is job five map task is anyways gonna run okay and i have also specified in my current map it is job four reduced tasks so total of nine jvms has to be created and has to be teared down in some scenarios the cost of tearing down and creation of the jvm is much more than the actual computation the actual computation is one second but the jvm tear down and the jvm creation will take maybe more than 20 30 seconds so the total job time is 31 to 50 seconds and out of this 80 percent is just the jvm creation tear down because of nine jvm creation nine jvm tear down now uber mode is that you don't have to create when you when you set your job when you wanted to set the uber mode as true then uh, Hadoop will automatically determine that uh, that uh, whether it has to depending on the data set size depending on the size of the data set it will try to see that whether it can accommodate, accommodate the entire map task and reduce task in a single JVM it will meaning that all the nine map all the four map tasks for five map tasks and the four map tasks they will run on a single JVM they will not run on one JV. They will not run on nine JVM as I explained earlier. They will run on a single JVM. So running of the entire map of this job in a single JVM is known as a Uber mode. Is that clear? Yes. Um, thanks so much again. Device is little okay okay now since my map job is over i would like to go into my hadoop fs minus ls mr underscore op1 and i must see four reducers four output files since my i've set four reducers you can very well see that here direct fine i wanted to set the number of reducer tasks as zero how many output files i should see this time I believe we should not see anything then. I believe that you have not done any revision then. Can anyone do this? Yes, so I'm actually not revised. Anyone would like to take a guess that how many output files I will see here? Okay. Any other, any other guesses? Or it or or it may be equal to the number of map uh, tasks which have run. But again, because actual data is being uh, emitted by the reduce, that is the basis I'm saying. It won't give any output. Why may I, okay okay M R O P two and let us see. I, there are five map tasks which are running and zero reduced task. Somebody said one, somebody said no, somebody said five, right? Who said five? Because actually the output of the map usually goes to the local file system and it is the reduce which picks the data from the local file system. So that is the reason I'm saying it won't put any data. At this point of time, please remove this conception from your mind that only the reducer can generate the output. What if you? What if the business logic, business logic, whatever you are trying to solve, can easily be done in the map task? Then you don't require the reduce task, right? You don't have to create any other J, uh, other JVM. Why do you want to create it? Other? Why do you want to go for the creation of other JVM or the reduce task when the, when the, when there is no necessity at all? If the if your job if your if your problem statement can be easily solved in your map task in a map method itself. Then why do you want to go for a why do you want to go for a reduce? A very classical example of doing this is in the filtering operation. I want to filter all, all those words which are starting with A. That's the only job. Do you really think you have to go for the reducer? 
it can be very well done in the map phase wherein you wherein for each word you will see that whether it's starting with a or not and that's it so remove the conception that you require reducer always uh, so actually my arg argument is that actually what i have read uh, earlier uh, that the, uh, the output of the map is an intermediate data and it is stored in a local file system so if the data is itself in the local file system so how so that you know output will output. come into the output the inter, uh, please note that the intermediate output will be stored on local file system but if it, that is the final output it will never be stored if it has to go to the reducer then it has then it makes sense to store in the local file system right if it is not going to the reducer, what is that point in storing a local file system? It will directly store in the HDFS. And can you please see this here? There are five map tasks. Can anyone tell me how does the output of the map task will look like? Tell me one entry. Be jumbled. Uh, that's fine, but uh, tell me a key and a value. Key, key would be the word and the value would be the corresponding uh, one, 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 one kind of thing. One, one means, let's say, let's say there are 10 apples, then how the output will look like? Okay, the key would be the apple and the value would be 10 times sub one separated by space. Oh, okay. Are you emitting the key value pairs in the mapper like that? Are you putting the key key pair like that? Apple fifty cup space fifty space fifty, or map it is will job will do it for you. No, that's what I, this I was was saying. Count one if it if count is two times it will say count one space one. Oh, that's what I was trying to say. Enough. Off one. It's not putting. Yeah. There are two offs. No? Yes. There are three offs. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. I have to think. Yeah, I have to revise. <laughs> no. It's just whatever you're emitting from the key value from the map. It will emit as is. It's an it's an intermediate output. It will it will display whatever you have emitted from the mapper. Simple. Okay. The last bit of today would be to. Uh, so so uh, sorry to interrupt. One question I have here. So it means if we explicitly explicitly set a uh, number of reducers to zero, then the data uh, which comes from the map a mapper which otherwise stores in the local will go to the HDFS. Is that the deciding factor whether map will go to the HDFS or it will be in local? Yeah. Now here uh, the uh, the input split size are. Uh, uh, or the block size which we have kept our data onto HDFS is 120 MB, which means that each map task is going to process 120 MB of block of data, but there is no 120 MB block of data. So you have one map task is uh, one map task is actually uh, what do you say? Uh, one map task is um, uh, 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 processing the entire file. I want to process each map task should process one MB of data. What I'm trying to say, each map task should process one MB of data, which I mean the input split size should be one MB. Anyone remembers the formula for this? It is maximum of Minimum input split, minimum size, minimum input split size. Anyone remembers or not? No. Comma. Minimum of maximum I, input size. Comma block size. So I want to give my left hand side and right hand side equal. So maximum of 
the block size is a 120 MB. Minimum input split size, I will make it's a default value is a one byte. Ma minimum of the maximum input split size, I will make it as a one MB. The block size is a constant, which is 120 MB. Equal to maximum of one byte, comma, the minimum of these two will be one MB. So the left hand side and right hand side will be equal if 1 MB is equal to 1 MB. Correct. So what I have to change is this maximum input split size to 1 MB. I have to change this to 1 MB. So the property here is size. I have to make it as 1048576. That is equal to, that is nothing but 1024 into 1024. That's 1 MB. 1 MB in bytes. Mapred.max.split.size. This is a property. So, okay, so how do I do that? I have to go to my conf, and I hope by this time you should have feel the pain that every time I have to change the code, uh, build it, dip, and then move it to my cluster, and then I have to run it. You must answer yourself is this the way you have to do it every time? No, right? There is no point in doing like this every time. There should be some mechanism wherein all these properties can be sent uh, can be can be provided to my job at the runtime and should take automatically i don't have to i don't want to change the code and that's what that's so to to and that would be the interest of our next topic but right now you should do all these things so that you understand the pain and then you understand the motivation of our next topic so map red dot max dot speed dot size one zero four eight five one zero four eight Five seven six. Okay, but okay. Let me ask you the question. Now, if it is a one MB input split size, then how many map tasks is gonna run? From here, it will it will have a two blocks. That's a two input split size two, one three, and then again it will have a two. That would be five. It will have a, again one here, and it will again have two here. So it will be total of a eight input splits will be there, and we must see eight map tasks. And to see that 8 map task, I am setting explicit number of reduced tasks as 0. And I have to build the code and rm minus f word count. Again, these concepts are explained in the uh, basics of uh, MapReduce lecture 13 and lecture 14. And I must see eight output files. Eight output files, eight map tasks. So that clarifies whatever we have studied in lecture 13, lecture 14, the basics. We have seen all these things in action. So that's all for today. So in the next class, we will uh, remove all these things wherein the pain of every time a new thing comes up, I want to try out new things. Again, I have to come back and change it onto my code, build the code, move the code to my cluster and run it again. So that becomes a very painful activity. Uh, because right now the project is small so you will like 
building it but if the project is really big then building the code and doing all this stuff would be a very painful very very will be a very painful task in sometimes in my for example in a big projects my code itself takes 27 minutes to build it up with the unit test cases and everything it takes almost 17 to 27 minutes when it, we have to run the blue full blown regression everything so in that scenarios you have to wait for 30 minutes let's say to see the changes so uh, you will not really want to do this kinds of do that kind of activity so uh, you will do work with the configurations wherein uh, all those things can be passed as a parameters at runtime it will try to run it okay so in the next class the motivation will be how to use this and that's nothing but we are going to use the tool learner to do that all the stuff so that's all for today thank you guys let's meet tomorrow bye